Let's welcome in the founder of Appaloosa Management now. David, welcome back. Thanks so much for being with us. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's great to have you, um, especially at a time where stocks are basically hanging around record highs. The 10-year, the yield's been ticking up. I said it touched 170 earlier. It's dropped a little bit back. Do you like the equity market here? You mean like I like you, Scott, or are you talking about like on a personal basis or? Personal, professional, like, however you want to characterize like, it, David. <laughs> um, look, I like it as a long-term instrument that I think everybody needs in their portfolio. Okay. Do you like it for the risk reward right now in stocks, given where valuations are relative to where rates are? It, as a trader, trader, you're asking me as a trader or as an investor, Scott? As, an, as an investor, David. As an investor, um, like, I, like you know, I'll use a, a, it's like a Warren Buffett line. You know, it's a great asset for the long term. So, but um, I mean, look, I mean, <laughs> I don't think there's any great asset classes right now. There's, you know, people on your show have talked about the risk of inflation. And uh, the question is, you know, what the Fed's doing, I guess how pretty much the city is going to taper today, um, you know, online when people expect it. Um, you know, the question is when will they raise interest rates and we're really what is the underlying inflation and how much is uh, endemic in the becoming endemic inside the economy. And that's really what we're dealing with right now. So, I mean, if you go down different asset classes, um, stocks, I mean, I, I don't love stocks. I don't love bonds. I don't love junk bonds. I don't like, you know, you know, <laughs> It's a question, what's the um, what's the best looking, you know, investment versus other investments when nothing looks that great? So what do you do? Are you raising your cash as a result of that? Have you have you taken your exposure to stocks down as a result of that view? Yeah, I mean, we've been listen, we've been probably too conservative this year. I mean, we've we've done OK because of where we were in the market. We were in commodities and oil, but um and, you know, we, we continue to keep that exposure, you know, relatively low, but still invested. And um, look, I think, like I said, I think you stay invested in the stock market to a certain extent. I don't think if you're you don't have your highest concentration that you'd ever have, um, but you continue some investment. It's expensive to sell and pay taxes. And I don't think we're at that sort of that sort of market where you have to worry about that. I'm going to get out no matter what. And I want to get my you know, I want to go short the market and. You know, but I don't think it's a great investment right here. And I don't, you know, because I just don't know um, how interest rates are going to behave next year. And um, I don't know. Um, <laughs> I think that there's a lot of people don't know a lot of things, including this Fed. And it's impossible to know. I don't know how sh what the you know, full employment right now is after if there's structural changes to the labor market and there's some things going on with inflation. And if there are, you know, and, and how long I pause it today, how long the supply uh, issues last and how people get used to a higher inflation rate. And quite frankly, the Fed doesn't know all these things either. So if there's, you know, if there's, it's a, you know, so it's a question of what, you know, if, if you do have higher interest rates or if they, you know, tapering creates higher interest rates, um, you know, you can't, you can't love the stock market as a trade, you know, necessarily. On the other hand, look, if, if bonds want to stay here at 160, you know, 160s, if the 10-year wants to stay in the 160s, the stock market will probably go up in the short term. And, you know, that's, you know, that's what will happen. Um, you know, it's a question. The problem I have with saying that is it seems so stupid to invest in bonds at 160. 